So I've been reading a lot lately, but I've been mostly looking at trade paperbacks, omnibuses of comic books, and a lot of novels, and I haven't really been reading a lot of what people would call floppies, and that is individual issues of comic books. I had this bin of comic book back issues that I bought a really long time ago that I kind of totally forgot about, and uh, I'm kind of happy I found them again because um, I do plan to read them eventually. So I just thought I would share with everybody what I found in this backlog bin of comics. Right here, right now, coming at you. Hello to all my comic book hoarders, Dante D here, and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. I'm sure all of you who are watching this right now can identify with the issue I've been having. You know, you buy a lot of comic books, you're, you're, you're going on this collecting frenzy, and uh, then they end up in a bin somewhere because you just bought so much, too much that you can actually read in a timely manner, and you kind of maybe forget about them. That is exactly what happened to me. Um, I bought all these comic books, and uh, I do plan to read them and, you know, re-bag re and board them and everything. But uh, I thought before I start that, that I would kind of show you what I found. And if you've been watching the channel for a while, some of these books may have appeared in some haul videos that I've done in the past. But I haven't done a haul video in a really, really long time. That's how long it's been since I've purchased any comic books. As some of you probably know, I've said to you many times that I've stopped buying back issues of comics just because I don't really think it's worth it anymore. But I'm happy with the ones that I have and I'm really excited to have them and I'm really excited to share them with you right now. So there are quite a few of them, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on each book. I'm just gonna kinda run through them and let you know if there's anything uh, that I know is significant. So here's our first book. This is The Incredible Hulk number uh, 321. I don't think there's anything too significant about this book. If there is, let me know. Um, this is Incredible Hulk number 377. This is a, a classic cover. I uh, absolutely love this cover. I'm really, really happy to have it. Next, we have the uh, Incredible Hulk number 411. Again, don't think there's anything too significant about uh, this book here. This is just freaking hilarious. <laughs> the Incredible Hulk number 417. Uh, it says, please do not tell anyone the shocking secret of the bachelor party. Um, okay. <laughs> this is going to be an interesting issue, I think. Okay, we have uh, the Uncanny X-Men, number 161. Uh, and I think there's also another one here. Yeah, there's the Uncanny X-Men, number 162 as well. If I remember correctly, I think this is the issue in which we get a little bit of background about um, Magneto's history as a uh, Holocaust victim. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, if you know, please let me know in the comments. Uh, okay, so and again, this was uh, the next one. Uncanny X-Men number 162. Um, they're just in the same bag together. Uh, next we have Uncanny X-Men number 166. Nothing on the back. Uncanny X-Men number 176. Uncanny X-Men number 187. Uncanny X-Men 186, or sorry, 196, rather. X-Men 223, quite a bit of X-Men here. X-Men 280. X-Men 281, I love this. Um, it's kind of a cool cover. Uh, I think it's Will Sportacio cover, actually. Um, and uh, it says a mutant milestone, a new team is born. Uh, this definitely is a 90s book <laughs> from, uh, I can tell by the art and um, everything on the page basically telling you buy this book because it's gonna be a collectible. Uh, absolutely love that. Uh, 284, expand 284. Oh, sorry, there are two of those actually. X-Men 289, this one's not even bagged. 
uh, X-Men 291, 293, 295, Executioner Song. I have to say, uh, I read that run in um, trade paperback form and I did not care for it at all. Uh, I thought it was weak. Just saying, here's another Executioner Song Part 9. The story was just really weird. I know I wasn't a big fan of it. It's kind of bland. Uh, this is kind of a, here's another 90s cover for sure. Uh, X-Men uh, 300, an X-Men Anniversary Spectacular. If you were buying comics in the 90s, uh, let me know. I was only maybe like four years old when this came out, but um, if, uh, if you were buying comics in the 90s, let me know, did you think that these holographic covers equaled collectible and worth money in the future? Uh, let me know. Um, they're nice to look at though, I have to say. Uh, another Executioner song. It's X-Men number 15. Uh, this is the Jim Lee X-Men run. I don't think Jim, Jim Lee was off of it by, by this point, but uh, I always call it the Jim Lee X-Men, but uh, that's number 31. Uh, and whoa, we're making a big, big jump to Uncanny X-Men 368. Okay, now we have um, Tales to Astonish. Uh, this I think was from Midtown Comics. Uh, and you know what? I Now that I look at this, I think I remember what was wrong with this book. Ready? Yeah, the cover <laughs> was detached and that's how it came to me. Uh, but um, I, was, I was really kind of mad about that because um, I, I love these um, these uh, these Silver Age covers, um, they're just they're just a lot of fun. But uh, Midtown was really good about it. I emailed them, I sent them a picture of um, what had happened, and um, they gave me a full refund for the book. So they were they were great, and they told me I could keep it too. So that was that was nice of them. Here's the Invaders number three, Invaders number four. I think I have the number one and two of this as well. Uh, it's already in my um, my uh, collection. Uh, King Conan, number 13. Uh, I actually love King Conan. This is a really, really fun book. These are like double-sized issues too. Um, if you look up there, this, these books came out in the early 1980s and uh, $1 for a book in the 1980s was kind of a lot. But uh, when you look at how thick, they're, they're quite thick. Uh, I don't know if you could tell here. They're a lot, lot longer than our standard comic book. And that, that's how the whole series is. Um, I have the number one of this too, but I, uh, I think I had started reading these and then I just kind of paused and, uh, I finished at number 13, but, uh, yeah, I have one, one through, uh, one through 12 as well in my collection. Here's 14, 15, 17, and then we have Son of Satan number one. I love Marvel horror. Uh, I've never read Son of Satan, uh, but I'm happy to have this in my collection um, because seven, I love 70s comics the best um, overall. Bronze Age is like, Bronze Age is, is where it's at for me. I, I just, I love the art in the Bronze Age and I love, um, I love the stories and everything. So I'm really happy to have this in here. Uh, I'll get around to reading it eventually. Son of Satan number two. Wow, cool cover there. Love that cover. Number three. Number four, number five, and a beat up copy of The Amazing Spider-Man number 88. Um, I, I think it's still like attached and everything and complete. It's just, uh, it's just really, really beat up. Okay, now we're on to Amazing Spider-Man number 89. This is in a little bit better condition. And Amazing Spider-Man number 90. And this is the death of Gwen Stacy. This is a key issue of Amazing Spider-Man. It's actually in pretty decent condition too. Uh, really happy to have this book. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 113. A really, really beat copy of um, Amazing Spider-Man number 115. Uh, it is together, but it's very, very fragile. <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man number 119. I absolutely love, love this cover. It is, I, I just think Hulk looks really, really cool and the art on Hulk and 
seeing Spider-Man and Hulk on the um, on the same same cover is just really awesome. Love it. Okay, moving on, we have Amazing Spider-Man number 120. Um, I'm sure you're wondering if 121 is next. No, it is not next, but I do have it in the collection. I've already read it, uh, but this is a really cool cover too. Love it. All right, next we have Amazing Spider-Man number 128. Will it be there? Will it be there? Ah, I do have it. Amazing Spider-Man number 129. And this, of course, is the first appearance of the Punisher. Huge, huge key issue in, uh, in the Amazing Spider-Man uh, run. Uh, I actually haven't read this one yet, so I'm uh, really excited uh, to carefully get through it and see what the first appearance of the Punisher was like. The Amazing Spider-Man number 131. Don't think there's anything significant about this one. Amazing Spider-Man number 134. I believe this is the first appearance of the Tarantula. Pretty sure, pretty sure. Amazing Spider-Man number 135. This, I believe, is the second appearance of the Punisher. Yeah, Return of the Punisher. This is the second appearance of the Punisher. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 30, 136. Uh, I think this is my second or third copy of this book, actually. Uh, and I believe this is the first appearance of Green Goblin 3 or Green Goblin 2 or something. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 137. Not sure if there's anything key about this one, but it's a cool cover, though. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 144. I believe this is the beginning of the original clone saga. Um, yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I think this is the, th I'm not sure if this is the start of the, the original clone saga or if this one is, but uh, no, no, I, no, it is this one, 144. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 145. Yeah. All this and Gwen Stacy too. Yeah, so this is still that that original clone saga. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 153. Amazing Spider-Man number 197. Love this cover. Amazing Spider-Man number 203. Amazing Spider-Man number 208. There's a lot of Spider-Man in this. <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man number 218. Uh, in case you don't know, uh, The Amazing Spider-Man is my uh, favorite series right behind um, Batman. Uh, Batman's my favorite hero, and um, I, I would say my second favorite is, is uh, Spider-Man. Uh, what the heck is this? Complimentary, not to be sold. Why is that on there? Um, this is an extra copy. I have two copies of this, apparently. But uh, if you know anything about this why that stamp is on there. I'd really like to know. It's, uh, it's kind of interesting. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 220. Amazing Spider-Man number 235. And the Amazing Spider-Man contains it. There's a lot of Spider-Man in here. I'm excited, actually. Uh, I love reading Spider-Man. Amazing Spider-Man number 247. Amazing Spider-Man number 249. Wow, this is almost like a full run. This is amazing. Okay. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 272. Amazing Spider-Man number 337 now, big jump. Amazing Spider-Man number 343. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 371. Uh, what's next here? Amazing Spider-Man number 376. I don't think there's anything significant about that one. Uh, this isn't the first appearance of Cardiac, is it? If you know the first appearance of Cardiac, let me know. I don't think this is it though. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 377. This is Marvel Tales. Uh, this is when they started reprinting um, issues of, uh, of Spider-Man. Uh, they're basically just repackaging and reprinting um, some of their earlier stories. Uh, cool cover, I really like this cover. Okay, the Amazing, Amazing Spider-Man is done. Uh, now we're at Exo Man of War number one. This is a Valiant book. Exo, Exo Man of War number two. Uh, Man of War number three. 
Uh, it's only three first three issues of uh, XO Man of War. Uh, and then we have Dark Hawk number two. These are all uh, raw. Uh, Dark Hawk number three. If you've read Dark Hawk, let me know. Um, I think I got these for like, I don't know, 25 cents or something like that. They were really cheap, so I just picked them up. Robocop. <laughs> okay, this must have come in a lot. I totally would not have uh, purchased this willingly. But uh, yeah, there's Robocop number one. If you've read this, let me know if it's any good. Namor number 37. Cool cover. I think that's uh, is that Jay Lee. I think that's a Jay Lee cover. It's kind of cool. Uh, the Question Returns. Uh, this is an obscure book. Probably came in a um, in a lot. Iron Man number 177. Uh, this probably came in a lot too. I have to be honest. I'm not a big fan of the Iron Man uh, series. Um, so uh, I don't have any Iron Man in my collection except for this actually to, to be honest with you. Um, and uh, yeah, so this for sure came in a lot because I don't willingly look for Iron Man books. Oh, Punisher Summer Special number two. Looks really cool. Shadowhawk. Is that a number one? No, it's a number two. That's a really beat up book. I wonder where that came from. I, 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 I actually have no idea. I couldn't even tell you where I got all these books from. I know like some come from lots. I don't know. Uh, Speedball number one. It's kind of a lame character, Speedball. All right, Kazar the Savage, uh, number one. This is a uh, second or third Kazar series. Can't remember, but uh, I, I have the original Kazar series uh, from the mid seventies, I think, and it's like really, really good. So I decided to pick up um, the Kazar the Savage run from the nineteen eighties. I, I heard it's pretty good. Um, these are all raw, unfortunately, but uh, I will definitely bag and board them after I've read them. Number two. Whoops, number, that, that was number th number two, number three, number four. These are gonna get harder and harder because they're to stand because they're not bagged and boarded. This is uh, number five, that's a really cool cover. Number six, number seven, number eight. Number nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I think this is a full run. Did the series get canceled after 17? Let me know if you know. Okay, and randomly I found another issue of Exo Man of War. Um, I actually don't even know why I have Exo Man of War. Um, I was never really interested in this book. I don't know how it got in here. Um, I might have picked it up somewhere. I can't remember. Uh, oh, here we go. Exo Man of War number zero. I think this is a Joe Casada cover, actually. Um, really kind of cool. I know people hate Joe Casada, um, but he had some pretty cool stuff back in the 90s. I think he also worked on um, Sword of Azrael. And uh, I actually have the trade that I'm, um, it's on my list to read and can't wait. Interesting. The Odyssey. I have no idea where the hell this came from. Um, I love the Odyssey, actually. Uh, I love Greek, Greek mythology, Greek legends. Uh, I actually think I'm going to read this one. That's really... I didn't even know Marvel did these types of classics. Very cool. Awesome. I learned something new today. Captain America. Uh, again, this probably came in a lot. Um, I'm not a fan of Captain America at all. Um, I don't know. I, I just never, I don't have any Captain America in my collection. Um, but uh, this is here for some reason. It must have come in a lot. Uh, we've already seen this. Uh, I guess this is another copy of a book I don't even really want. <laughs> Secret Wars number, Secret Wars 2 number 1. Uh, I think this one here actually didn't get didn't have as great a response as the original Secret Wars, but uh, I love Secret Wars and uh, I will read this. Is this a full run? I don't even know. Uh, here's number two. It's kind of a cool cover. Number three. Ah, that's a really cool cover. Number four in a nine issue limited series. Oh, I don't have the rest of them. That's crap. Oh, well. I'm sure, maybe I'll find the trade somewhere. 
All right, this is Strange Tales number 174 uh, with Golem. Not cool. Strange Tales number 176 this is from Midtown Comics. Strange Tales number 177. I love, I think I mentioned this already, but I love Bronze Age stuff. I'll just, I'll buy anything from the Bronze Age just because I absolutely love it. Uh, Peter Parker, Spectacular Spider-Man number 115. Kind of a cool cover. Peter Parker Spectacular Spider-Man is another uh, series that I really, really enjoy. Um, if you are um, set on collecting uh, Spider-Man issues and you find The Amazing Spider-Man to be a little bit too expensive, check out uh, Peter Parker Spectacular Spider-Man. Um, more often than not, they're actually it's the cheaper alternative to The Amazing Spider-Man. Um, but the prices, from what I understand, are going up for... Um, Spectacular Spider-Man as well. Um, stories are just as great. I know they reserve the best content for Amazing Spider-Man, but I enjoyed Spectacular Spider-Man just as much. I haven't read the whole run, but I've, I've read quite a few issues of Spectacular. Love this cover. This is a Spectacular 127. Uh, Spectacular Spider-Man number 155. This one's raw. Uh, Tales of Suspense number 82. Quick trivia, if you've been watching the channel for a while, uh, this, this comic book was actually featured um, in the channel's intro. <laughs> uh, this is a, one of those what ifs. This is what if The Amazing Spider-Man had married Black Cat. This is number 21. Oh, very cool, Marvels. This is um, Alex Ross. He's such, such a great, such a great, great, um, artist love his stuff ah uh, this is marvel's number one i think this is the number this is the zero or the yeah this is number zero uh this is a cover swipe from uh marvel comics number one what a nice cover i love that one with silver surfer Oh, and Spectacular Spider-Man again, apparently. 154. I don't know how the heck that got in the middle there. Love this cover with uh, Gwen Stacy and the Green Goblin. Oh, now we're getting into some Batman. Uh, this is uh, Batman number 300. I'm sure you could tell, like, most of the stuff that I have is um, Marvel. Um, I think most of my collection is actually Marvel. Um which is kind of ironic because Batman's my all-time favorite superhero. Um, my collection is mostly Marvel and then Batman. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Very, very interesting. Okay, uh, so, um, yeah, so this is uh, Batman uh, number 300. Oh, duh, it's right there. <laughs> I don't know if there's anything significant about this one, but... Uh... I know this is a key issue of some sort. I actually believe this might be the first appearance of Lucius Fox. Not sure. Let me know if you know for sure, but I'm pretty sure this is the first appearance of Lucius Fox. Um, so this is the DC edition, and then I also have the uh, Whitman edition. Uh, apparently these used to be sold um, like in bundles of uh, comics. Like DC gave the rights over to this like Whitman company to reprint them and sell them in bundles. So this is the DC, and there's the Whitman edition. So there's two editions of that. This is uh, Batman number 310. Don't think that's a key issue. Batman number 316. Ah, here we go. Batman 358. This is a uh, this is my second uh, copy of this uh, book, I believe, and I believe this is the first. Um, this is a key issue. It's a uh, first Killer Croc on a cover, but he's. Um, He's disguised. This is uh, Batman number 320. Don't think there's anything significant about that one. Batman 318. Is this the first Firebug or Firefly? Not, not sure. I believe it is though. No, another copy of Batman 320. Batman 322. And I actually think the rest of this is uh, it's all Batman, funny enough. Uh, this is Batman number 328. 
can't wait to read these. I love Batman stories. Like, I, it's just such a joy to read Batman stories. I, I, I don't think I've ever read a Batman story I don't really like. Um, and Batman was one of those characters that uh, in the 90s actually stayed consistently good. Like, I feel in the 90s, like, you know, quality is really kind of hit or miss, but Batman, like, always, never, never failed to impress me. That's Batman 331. Batman 336. Lot of Batman here. Ah, Batman 357. This is the first appearance of Killer Croc, and I believe it's also the first appearance of Jason Todd, if I'm not mistaken correctly. I'm not really up on my uh, history that well, apparently. Can't really remember a lot of these. So I, I, I remember this book here. I, it took me forever to find. I absolutely love, love it. Uh, can't wait to read it. Batman 359, the Killer Croc goodness continues. Batman 379, Batman 384, it's the first calendar, no, I don't think it's the first calendar, man. Uh, Batman 385, Batman 386, I know for sure this is the first appearance of the Black Mask. First appearance of Black Mask, for sure. Really cool book. Uh, Batman 387, Batman 388, love this cover, Batman 389, Batman 390, Batman 391, that's another cool cover, Batman 399. Uh, by Doug Mensch. He's a he's a great Batman writer. I love Doug Mensch. Batman four fifty seven. This is one I always get confused with. Uh, this is a key issue. I think it's the whoops. I think this is the first full appearance in the comic book of Tim Drake in a Robin costume, because the first appearance of Tim Drake in a Robin costume is actually on a cover, but I think. In that particular issue, he wasn't, he didn't appear as Robin. I think this is his first appearance where, uh, as Robin. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not, I'm not too, too sure, but something like that anyway. This is uh, Batman 462. Cool cover there too. Batman 463. 464. Ooh, some stickiness there. Batman 465. Batman 475, I believe this is a key issue. This I believe is the first appearance of the Ventriloquist, who's actually a really, really cool cover, or sorry, is a very, very cool character. Uh, Batman 490, another cool cover. This is 90s Batman. Um, I, I really, really love 90s Batman. Uh, I actually have the entire Nightfall run. I don't know where this came from, but it's Batman 499. Um, Solomon Grundy, cool cover. Batman 525, more Killer Croc goodness. Batman 524. And now we jump to some New 52 Justice League. Cool, all right. Number one, number two, with awesome art by Jim Lee. Number three, I love Jim Lee's art. It's just so awesome. Number four, number five. He's really kind of developed his, his style a lot since the 90s, I feel. Uh, number six. And then this is uh, Machine Man. This is the uh, Barry Windsor Smith uh, Machine Man, I think. From the It's a limited series from the 80s, number one to four. It's all packaged together. I think I got this at a con. Uh, not entirely sure, but uh, yeah, they're all in here. I'm not gonna take them out, but uh, that's, uh, that's it. So that about does it for our video today. Really, really hope that you enjoyed all the comic books that um, I have rediscovered uh, in my house. Uh, let me know in the comments if that's ever happened to you before where you've purchased all of these comic books and essentially forgot about them and then rediscovered them and were like 
really excited about it. Until next time, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode.